there is something that I call the Alexander effect. And that refers to Alexander of Macedon. About 2,400 years ago, the Macedonian army conquered a large swath of the world from Italy to Afghanistan. And most historians agree that that would not have happened if that army was not led by Alexander. On the other hand, it's really pretty clear that Alexander could not have done this by himself. He needed the army, and he probably could not have done it with any army. He needed an army that had been trained and developed by his father, Philip. So we have this synergy between an individual that is really able to galvanize and organize an army, uh, and the army itself and the history of that army. So examples of the Alexander effect, which I think are very important for therapeutics, that have emerged in the past year have um, mostly involved weight control and the effect of genes on the microbiome uh, and on body weight. So we know that um, that most of your that that a lot of the influence on body weight is genetic, and we know this from uh, studies of identical twins that are reared apart, and the the Scandinavian twin registries, Swedish and Danish, are very helpful in this regard because they track all the skins, all, all the twins in their countries, uh, fraternal, identical, those that are reared together in the same home and those that are reared apart. And there have been a lot of really interesting studies that have been done using those individuals. There also is a growing appreciation for the role of a human's genes or an animal's genes in shaping the microbiome basically in creating uh, an environment in which certain microbes feel comfortable and certain others don't. And uh, so studies that were done with the uh, Swedish twin registry looking at the microbial composition um, of stool concluded that about 30% of the composition of the gut microbiome was genetically linked, and 70% seemed to be environmental and related uh, to diet. Now, what was interesting was that the 30% of linkage mostly had to do with an organism that nobody had heard of three years before this study was done, called Christian Sinella. And that the linkage seemed to involve leanness. That is, those individuals who had a high level of Christian Sinella also tended to have lean body weight. So then they isolated the Christian Sinella and they fed it to obese, they fed it to mice. And they found that the presence of Christian Sinella in these mice protected them from becoming obese. Now there's been a lot of interest in the link between gut microbes and obesity for the past decade. And in fact, I would say that a lot of the research and the funding for that research has been driven by the discovery of that link and the desire of companies to make billions and billions of dollars by finding the cure for obesity through gut microbes. Um, and it's been a very frustrating um, enterprise because the results have been very inconsistent. You'll see one pattern. Um, and then you'll see another pattern in another, um, uh, in, in another study. And a lot of the early studies suggested that the ratio of two different predominant phyla, Bacteroides, Bacteroidides and Firmicutes in the, in the stool was the determining factor. Um, that hasn't really held up, but it's still, you st you'll still see that um, from time to time. So there was a fascinating twin study that was done in California that got a lot of press, published about a year or two ago. They took identical twins um, who were discordant for body weight. That is, so there was a lean twin and there was a heavy twin. It takes a lot of research to find people like that. And they took um, their gut microbes and they fed them 
to germ-free mice. And they found that the mice that had been fed microbes by the lean twin became resistant to getting fat, whereas the mice that were fed microbes from the obese twin very easily became fat. And so it was pretty clear that there was something in the microbiome that was responsible for body weight. They then tried to identify which organisms were responsible. They tried using a probiotic that consisted of 35 strains. It had no effect. I mean, it was only the total microbiome that did it. So when you looked at that study, it would seem as if it's the whole community that's necessary. There's no single organism that can do it. But those people didn't know about Christian Sinella. They didn't know how to find Christian Sinella. And so then you, you, know, you look at, at the, the more recent study, which says, hey, maybe it isn't the whole, the whole microbiome. Maybe it's this Alexander organism Christian Sinella that is capable of organizing the whole microbiome so that you get weight loss. And if you isolate 35 different organisms, but you leave Alexander out, they're not going to do anything. You can only conquer the world with that organism being part of the picture. That becomes very important therapeutically because we can then begin to think about ways of altering gut microbes to encourage the growth of Alexander organisms. Thanks so much for watching and for more great clips like this, please subscribe to our YouTube channel.